Hello and welcome to watch this little video of mine where I will show you on how we can work with double exposure effects using Coral Photo Paint. As you probably know, Coral Photo Paint is part of the Coral Draw Graphics suit and my name is Stefan Limblad. I'm an illustrator, artist and graphic designer and I'm based in Stockholm, Sweden. In front of you, you see an illustration that I made with this said double exposure effect and it was made for the written tutorial and I want to show you how I did it. So it will look, might look a little bit different in some details from when I originally did this, but you're going to be able to follow me on how we create this from scratch to finish. So what we have here is on top here, we see type fonts, uh, something that I've written with numbers, of course. I also have an image of a bald eagle, a mountain gorilla, and also an old photograph from China, I believe. Uh, with bicycles and buses and cars. We also see this texture down here and the texture is something that I've made myself um, so you will have to use any of the textures you use yourself. If you have photo paint and so on you might find these images within Corel Connect so just go ahead and look for them there in photos folder. Okay so let's get going here so how do you do this? Well, we start by actually removing the background, the background that is around the mountain gorilla, but also, of course, the bald eagle that we have here. And I'm going to show you two different ways, uh, two situations. For instance, this bald eagle is a little bit easier, really quick to remove the background. So we're going to go by creating this background into an object. So what we do is simply to click this little icon here, which creates an object from the background. When that is done, just use your Wacom pen or computer mouse and press down and drag to the side and the blue will vanish. If that's not nifty, I don't know what is. <laughs> we saw that there's some blue up here, so we're just going to do the same procedure there. And then we have our bald eagle. So that was by using in the toolbar something called color transparency tool so that's the one to use so now when we're going to go do the uh, removal of the background around the mountain gorilla we're going to use the old classic magic wand mask and the thing here is that when you're working with magic wand and mask tools like this uh, you have to be aware that depending on how complex the images and how the similar colors are to the rest of the image you might have to place yourself with the cursor a little bit depending on your image another thing is also I recommend is to actually make even also here the background into an object so we're gonna create an object from the object again here and that is because I'm gonna as I using the mask tool I'm actually gonna use the delete button on my keyboard and uh, so that's gonna actually gonna help me a little bit. I'm also using, you see that it actually uh, take up a lot of areas. So to prevent that, I can sometimes just start with a small piece of the image and then click uh, the delete button on the, on the screen here. And then we can do the same here on this side here and see how much we can grab. And then the delete button. This actually saves us some time, especially instead of uh, trying to figure out how to catch all different details of the image, like, like these two. So we, I'm actually going to use the eraser tool at some point, maybe. So let's see if we can remove that as well. So just, this is actually quite helpful many times because as I said, sometimes, as you already seen, the magic wand starts to create similar colors around. So this is a little bit uh, complicated for the tool. So we're going to use the eraser tool soon and then click. And you, all, you might see that I'm clicking up here where it says remove mask. So when I'm moving with the marching ant mask that you can see here on the screen, uh, and then when I like to remove that, I simply click up here, remove mask. And sometimes that's, uh, you can decide yourself if you like to do that or not. 
but that works really good for me. So now we see on the background here, because I'm doing it fairly quickly, we see a lot of dirt, so to speak, around. And in, in a sense, that's okay, because this image, as you can see on the original photo, what I want is something that looks a um, little bit worn out and uh, a little bit ruined, so to speak, in one sense. So uh, we don't have to keep everything uh, or remove everything. I mean, you also see that I'm scrolling out with a zoom tool here on the with the computer mouse. So we have some empty areas around here around the image, which makes it easier for us to raise with eraser tool. So here is the eraser tool, and now I'm and now I'm actually using a Wacom pen and simply remove with a pen. I often prefer to do it uh, do like this first with the magic wand or something like that and then simply using the eraser tool um, so you use any technique that works for you and now I'm using control shift key to reduce and the size of the nib of the pen and sometimes I press control shift to make it larger so sometimes when I'm erasing like this, it can be tricky to see if I really catch all the, the dirt that I really want to get out of the picture. So by do what we do then is I'm going to show you how I create a new object and fill it with an, another distinctive color that act, makes it easy for me to see any of the dirt that might be still be in the picture. But first we're going to just remove all this stuff we have here in the background of this image so um, let's see if we can uh, get this last thing here around the image gone and uh, like that also going to remove a little bit so what i said is i'm going to create a new object you see here down here and i'm going to place this object number two which is the new object and place it underneath the the gorilla and from there I'm actually going to use and try to see if we can just use white and fill that uh, actually it was red because I I didn't press enough let's see if we can make it into white so okay so was, there was some catch cache there so now we can go up to the object of the gorilla again and now we can see it's much easier for us and what why I'm doing this is because um, I don't want to have everything left um, like this. I'm going to want some some clean areas here. So okay, so now we've done that. Um, means that I can remove the that object, and now I can start by clicking the the plus sign here and create a new document. And you see, you see the size, 1980, 1500, so it's like 1500 pixels wide. It's also a resolution of 300 dpi. I usually always work with 300 dpi. So, and click OK on that one. So now we have an image that size that is similar to, to this one here. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly the same size. Maybe we actually should um, make this a little bit not as tall or high. I mean, so we'll put a 1400, see if that fits the size. Oh, yeah, I like that much better. So now we have the um, mountain gorilla. So I'm just going to go over here, right click and copy. And then go over to the new image that I'm working with. Sorry for that. And then control and V as in Victor on the keyboard and that will paste the image into the new image that we're going to create now sorry for that and then the bald eagle same here copy and then we'll paste that into the picture as well and here we also zoom out so we can find these handles and grab them in the corner and press down the shift key and then simply drag inwards and you'll keep the image um, 
in scale, so to speak. So now we're just gonna. Now I'm not having the uh, the shift key down, um, press down because I just want to have this corner here of him. And uh, so now I'm gonna go back to my reference image and see how big the bird is, the bird, the eagle here. So that's about that size, and this is down here where it starts. So I'm gonna try to mimic that one here. Okay, so we have that. That works for me. And then I'm selecting both of them and put it a little bit to the size like this, to the side I mean. And now I'm just going to reduce the size of them a little bit more and put them here in the middle. Okay, so now we have, um, I'm just going to remove something here on the gorilla again. I, I didn't really like that one here. But that doesn't really matter. What I'm now going to do is to select the both of them actually and combine them. And I do that by selecting both and go down here on the object docker. And you see here it says combine selected objects. It's a, it goes, the information goes a little bit out of the screen, but I, you'll, you'll find it if you just try that out yourself. And what that means is that, what, that we now have a single object up here instead of two. And now what I'm going to do is to, if you go back to reference image again, you will see that there's some things happening here. And that's actually me using a, um, a paint a paintbrush or a paint tool. Um, and I'm using the quick doodler. And I'm going to increase the size again. And taking the, here in the um, color palette, I'm choosing black. And... I'm also using a more solid, instead of the fluffy nib, I'm using a so more solid nib. I have to increase that a little bit. And then I'm gonna paint with black like this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see how I did that actually. Uh, let's see. If yeah, it goes up there, and so okay. So that's that's how I want to want to go with it with it. So something like that, and uh, from there I'm just gonna fill this with black, and I'm gonna reduce this the size of the nib, and like this, and you see how the black now really contrast um, the eagle and the mount the mountain gorilla, it doesn't matter because we're going to combine these three in, in just a while and we're going to add something called merge mode and I'm going to show you in just a while how that works. Um, if you're familiar with other uh, similar program like Photo Paint, uh, some of these programs will call them uh, layers styles or something uh, or something not layer styles but something else but we call it merge mode in photo paint so whatever they call it in other programs merge mode is what we're gonna go after and we're gonna find it merge mode when I first combine these again so we make this into one image and now we're gonna go over to select the the object that we're working on and then go up here where it says normal, depending on what version of photo paint you have. If you have an older version, it might already read merge mode. But if you have a new version, many times it's just uh, hover over it and it says merge mode. Normal is the normal. And you can choose and um, pick any of the merge mode that works for you. But I'm going to go with something called lightness. So now we got this feeling here. And now you see that we have a... Uh, what this means actually is is a non-destructive thing. So if I want to go back to normal, I can easily do that. So we're going to go down to lightness. Actually, I see here, I just actually want to go back here now and um, make them um, uh, separate these two objects again. Um, so we go back to what I already painted here and I just want to try something here uh, so I don't forget I believe that I simply started to um, 
using the eraser tool here and edge out a little bit of the black that I just painted. It makes a depending on I'm gonna add the bicycle scene for instance so it might look a little bit better cooler if I just go easy on the black down here something like that you're gonna see what I mean when we look at it again you see here for instance uh, so there's some black that I painted here and some of the mountain gorilla still going on there as well so now we've done that and that might help we're gonna go back as I said I'm gonna select these two again and go down to combine combine selected objects and now go over to lightness uh, the merge mode and lightness so now we have this one you also saw that I have this yellow color here so we're gonna take some of that by using the eyedropper tool and just pick somewhere where you feel that you find the, the kind of color of the image that works for you. If you have a reference image, otherwise you just go to the, um, to the color palettes uh, over here to the right or somewhere else here in the program where there's so many places you can find colors. But I usually, for, for quick work, I just use the, the palette here to the right. So now when we pick that color, we can actually go back to the other the image that we're working on on this tab and now I'm gonna place myself over on the background object and then create a new object meaning that the new object number four is underneath the gorilla and from there I'm gonna go back to the toolbar and using the fill tool and just fill the background with this color so now we have something really nice going on here and I'm just gonna move this one here and see if that works for me I just maybe I just want the the gorilla a little bit and the ball dig a little bit more to the center of the image and now when I've done that I'm just gonna pick some of the click the enter key there and then we're just gonna use the paint tool and just add some black here okay and then something like that So now we have that, what we now have to do is to grab this other image that we're working on, which is the uh, China bicycle scene. So what we do now is to simply select the object, this uh, city scene, and use copy. And then we go over to this image here, and then simply control V control and V as in Victor so we have that in the image like that and now what we're gonna do is to place it underneath the gorilla scene and um, actually before we do that we're actually gonna bring it up again and I also want to add some transparency you can actually select like I do here and just click 50 and then press the enter key or you can actually just go drag up and down like this and why I'm doing this is is because if we look at the reference image again you'll see that the old man with the bait with a hat is placed somewhere here on the bold the bold eagle and we also have this pagoda here that I want to have in on the head of the mountain gorilla and the easiest way of doing doing this is to simply make it transparent so it's easier for me to place the guy down here like this when it's a little bit transparent so now we see that the we need to drag it down a little bit see what what this gives I think we have to make that make it like that even a little bit more I really like that the head is where the gorilla really open his mouth and um, and so on so we're gonna keep that so now we can go back and make it solid again non transparent enter key <clears throat> and now we place it underneath our object number one which is our main object here that we're gonna work with so what we now do is to go over to object number one that you see in front of you and use we're gonna select this one and make it a mask 
create a mask, we use the control key on the keyboard again and then press the M, uh, which is M as in Martin. And that selects the whole area that we want. And now what we do is while that is selected, we go over to object number five in this case, which is the bicycle scene. We copy. And from there, we copy again and using the paste special. Um, sorry, now let's see here. Um, we have the texture here underneath the object 10 and um, object 10 is the texture object. So now let's see, what do I have to do now? Well, we more or less uh, finished. I'm still not that very fond of this font, but what's so great with PhotoPaint is that you just double click it and I'm actually going to go with a font that's called Freshman. It's kind of an American Western kind of font. Uh, I feel that would be better with the, uh, with the, with the numbers. And I also feel that the, um, the size of the now let's see shift key down there so we can make a little bit more in scale let's see if we can okay so that's the thing we don't have to take uh, all the whole numbers that are the extra ones keep them like that and then uh, I'm, I'm going to use the most probably the uh, opacity here but I'm actually gonna try to see if I can find something very quickly of the merge modes if there's anything particular there that I'll actually like um, this one is kind of fun we can actually use the I'll keep that in mind divide maybe use the divide and then some transparency on that one or this one color Huey well, let's see what uh, screen behind overlay now we're gonna go with the divide and then some transparency into that 50 and see what happens did that actually make any sense at all I think it did actually so all in all this is how you work with double exposure I hope you uh, learned something and had as fun as I had. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye.